You say you want an impressively sharp APS-C size sensor in a Nikon body that's small enough to still be pocketable? Well, Nikon heard you, and their answer is the Nikon Coolpix A. Hi, I'm Larry Becker, and this is the Nikon Coolpix A. It's a nice image quality upgrade to the Nikon point-and-shoot lineup that blends pocketability with some pro and consumer features. Right up front, let me say that you can grab some really impressively sharp images because this has a 16.2 megapixel APS-C size CMOS sensor with no optical low-pass filter. Not only is this the biggest size sensor Nikon has ever delivered in a non-DSLR body, the absence of the optical low-pass filter is a fairly new development in the industry, and people are really loving the sharp results. Whether you're shooting RAW or JPEG, the image sharpness is great, and you'll find there's less of a need to sharpen your RAW images as much as you might be used to, because there's already a sharpness there at the pixel level. The thing is, this camera is not for everybody, mainly because it has a fixed focal length, the lens is a 35mm equivalent to a 28mm lens, and it's relatively fast with a maximum aperture of f2.8. That means, though, that you're going to have a fairly wide image area, but no zooming. By the numbers, the ISO range is similar to some other DSLR APS-C size sensors, and even some Coolpix sensors at 100 to 3200 and expanded ISO goes up to 25,600. That's about the same native range as the Nikon Coolpix P7700, for example, but the boosted ISO does go a little further. Nevertheless, you'll find that the larger sensor surface area means the image noise is better than just about any other point-and-shoot on the market. Another number that's pretty impressive is the burst rate of up to 4 frames a second that can be sustained for up to 26 frames at full resolution. Just keep in mind that the lack of a zoom means that you probably won't be shooting sports, even with the nice buffer size and burst rate. The Coolpix A is a curious mix of both pro and consumer features that keeps me from being able to quickly and easily say who the target market is. For example, it has all the pro shooting modes, plus a couple of user-definable shooting modes, but some pro features seem to be missing, like the viewfinder is only a fixed LCD screen. There's no optical viewfinder or even an EVF. It can be great for landscapes, but you'll probably want to put it on a tripod because there's no vibration reduction built in. And you'll need to pick up a compatible wireless remote because there's no port for a cable remote shutter release. Pros will appreciate that there's a hot shoe for add-on speed lights, and there's a pop-up flash too. But surprisingly, some other Nikon Coolpix cameras have a pop-up flash with commander mode compatibility built in for controlling off-camera Nikon flashes, and the Coolpix A doesn't. It's just a plain pop-up flash. On the video side, you can capture impressive quality 1080p HD video with stereo sound, but there's no mic input so you have to rely on the built-in microphones. And since there's no dedicated movie record button, you'll need to go into the release mode settings and select movies. Then the shutter button becomes the movie record button, so there's no option to snap stills while filming. It also means you won't be shooting stills and then quickly start filming a movie scene since you have to make that shooting mode adjustment first. There are some great consumer features on this camera, like the I button that brings up a nice collection of adjustable information in the form of icons, almost like having a little control panel. So you can quickly jump to things like shutter release mode settings, quality, or autofocus area mode settings. Another great set of consumer-friendly features are in the retouch menu. You can make all kinds of fun post-processing adjustments right in the camera, like correcting for red eye, cropping, applying special effects or photo filters, again, all right inside the camera. With respect to the lens, I found that the focus system 
was relatively quick and while it's a little awkward to focus manually because of how the focus ring kind of hugs the camera body, the manual focus was responsive and I also liked how the distance bar graph on the LCD helps you judge where the manual focus really is. When you want to switch between focus modes, there's a focus selector mode switch on the side that lets you pick normal, macro, or manual focusing. The metal body and chassis makes this camera feel sturdy and a little heavy for its size, but it's a nice weight. The grips at the thumb area and on the front are both nice and just right for the weight and shape of the camera body. All the controls make sense. The menus are typical Nikon DSLR type menus and of course there are a couple of programmable function buttons. When it comes down to the shooting style that'll best match what this camera can do, I'd suggest that it's a great casual camera that'll let pros and consumers alike just point and shoot and capture some high quality images. If image quality and a pocketable size are on your short list, have a look at the Nikon Coolpix A. For Kelby Training and b &H, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.